I'm in the studio with Raquel Bauman, and um, we're going to talk a little bit about her art. But before we do that, there's kind of a compulsory thing that I always have to do with artists, and that is to talk about your background. So your uh, background is not in art. What is your, what is your academic background? Well, my academic background, I have a graduate degree in counseling psychology and a doctoral degree in academic administration. So how did you get started with art? Well, um, aunt uh, gave me a set of paints when I was about eight, nine years old, um, at the Cristina, and um, I've always done it, but it's always been something kind of in addition to uh, what I thought my work was, which was school. And, and so you also mentioned uh, earlier how you got into using tissue paper and combining color. Well, one of the, um, a lot of what's happened in my life is kind of happens by an accident or on a dare or whatever. And uh, we work, I was in high school, we were working on a, on a project and we were using tissue paper and I spilled some water. And uh, I became fascinated with the fluidity between one color and another, how there's just the gradation is infinite and I didn't have to figure it out. It happens, uh, the water does it on its own. So that's how I got to collage and, and, and working with tissue paper. I do have to find, look now uh, more carefully for, um, it's harder to find tissue paper that bleeds. Uh, we're talking about where you get your inspiration for uh, your art. We're, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the piece, uh, your, one of your uh, latest pieces. And... Um, Tell us where you got the inspiration for that. Well, I, I, the, the first thing was we needed uh, something for a series um, that I did with um, uh, Dr. Sophie Cohen, um, a professor um, from Leslie uh, University. Um, we did a series on, on race, racism, as it um, affects literature and um, um, you know, what we hear and how we speak. and. So it was a four, a four workshop series, and um, it occurred to me that um, long ago I learned a song when I was a little kid um, about the fact that Jesus loves all the children in the world, and the lyrics is red and yellow, black and white. And even as a little kid, I knew that I'd never met anyone who was yellow or red or black or white. Um, and um, so the piece that I did is... Um, Kind of has the red blend into the yellow orange, but there's no line between one color and another. And the other thing was that I drew a line. I mean, there's a line on the on the canvas, and um, some of those little squares are making their way through. So again, the idea that um, things are not static, and um, my sense is that. Um, the species is heading to beige. No matter what we do, it's going to get to something other than some of the little boxes that we've thought we could check with confidence. You know, I'm white or I'm black. Well, maybe not. Yeah. There is a piece uh, behind you. Uh, what is the? What can we take away from that? From that piece? What is the title of that, first the, of all? The, it's, uh, well, it's translated up into English. I usually title things in, in, in Spanish. It's Lirios Amarillos, um, which is um, uh, water lilies in yellow. And um, we happened, my brother, who is a Vietnam War vet, um, long ago in, in Texas, um, veterans were given an opportunity to buy um, acreage, about 10 acres in this kind of rural area, and uh, we have a pond, and that pond has some um, water levels in it, so um, that reminds me of Fayette County, the pond in, in, in Fayette County. Another piece that uh, we're going to talk about is the, um, the pear. What is the title of that one? It's called Peras, which is <laughs> pears. Uh, almost everything is titled uh, in Spanish, and I'm not, I have no idea why that happened. Just uh, I grew up speaking both English and Spanish from the get-go, so my first language, my L1, as we 
um, I often say, is uh, two, um, um, which I think is also really interesting. Um, but they, unless I can't think of what it might be called in Spanish, all the titles are in Spanish, so I think I mentioned that um, I, couldn't, I couldn't remember what to call, how to say redhead. So I have one piece that's called Redhead because I couldn't remember Pelirroja. So. so what was the inspiration for Peras? I don't remember exactly. I think we were talking about fruit or something. And um, um, and Pera, I, I, I also like the sound of words and how they, all you do is change one thing. Um, like you can, if you um, say pero, which is but, instead of, um, all you had to do was change one letter. So uh, I started to title that one pero peras, but pears, uh, or instead pears, or something. But anyway, yeah. Uh, Lowell is turning out to be uh, a, a real hotbed for for art and for artists. You know, it's this. You know, I read that uh, there are over 300 artists in um, Western Avenue. Western Avenue, yeah. And there are a number here in Gates Block on, at 307 Market Street in Lowell. Yeah. Uh, what brought you to Lowell? Well, I came to work at Lowell High School, actually, in the guidance department. Um, and I headed up the guidance department here for a little while. Um, and I happened to buy a condo at Air Lofts when I first moved to like 800 square feet of, of it's just a box, There's nothing in it except a kitchen and a bathroom. Um, but it has 17 foot ceilings, the second floor has 17 foot ceilings. So I came with my son and my brothers came up from Texas and created a loft within the loft, within the space for him. Um, and um, just a block, of, it was across the street, it's on Mill Street, you know, I worked a little high. So, um, um, and I also, I happened to get here at the right time. Um, Air Lofts was the first artist in workspace. And all of us were 25, 20, 20, 20 some odd years ago. So, a whole lot of artists, you know, connected to the brush and connected to, you know, some of the institutions that have been here for a long time. Yeah, I, I'm just surprised more people in the area, you know, the Boston area, surrounding areas don't know more about it, or don't spend more time here because there's just so much to see. Well, it's interesting you should say that because uh, I, I was born and brought up in Houston. So people will sometimes say to me, you came all the way from Lowell? It's not 20 miles. It's, it's you know, my neighborhood in Segundo Barrio is 15 miles. I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't seem to be a, a, a very far. But again, when I went to work, came to work in Worcester, uh, I thought the medical school was a sub. Worcester was a suburb of Boston because it's not very it's not very far when you think of miles, um, but it is not a suburb. Worcester is not a suburb of Boston. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, living in Chelmsford and, and uh, traveling into Boston is just so easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. But folks don't, I don't don't do that very much. I mean, we used to go to San Antonio to go to the zoo from Houston, it's 200 miles. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I find that really interesting. So you are, uh, what are you, are you working on anything right now? Um, I started working on a couple of things. Um, and again, it's kind of the, a connection to um, some of what I believe we should know and understand. Um, historically speaking. So I did an exhibition last year um, that I dedicated to my mom. Um, I used um, some of, some pages, some pieces of pages from books that she brought with her from Mexico when she married my dad and came to Houston. Um, and for example, there's one, one of the pieces is called, I, I tell, titled Paralelo Conservantes because the line in the, the piece of page that I used uh, describes Cervantes, the author, Spanish language author, as um, parallel, not lesser than or greater than Shakespeare. 
my mom wrote out on a page how to pronounce Shakespeare phonetically um, because SH, that sound doesn't exist in the Spanish language. So she had to try and figure out how to say Shakespeare. So anyway, you know, the, the idea that um, um, we need to understand a little bit more of our history, one of the other pieces I, I used is a line from um, Juan Inés de la Cruz, a Mexican nun, a contemporary of Shakespeare's, in fact. Um, who, the line that I used was, uh, I don't study, I don't try to learn to know more. I um, uh, try to be less ignorant. Not quite the same. So, yeah. Well, it's been a lot of fun talking to you. Um, you are uh, a co-op member at the Arts League of Lowell, so you can see Raquel's work at the Arts League of Lowell. Are you represented in any other gallery? No, not at this time. Yeah. So if you want to see her, uh, her work, come to the Arts League of Lowell, 307 Market Street in Lowell, Massachusetts. And I'm in Studio 401. Yeah. <laughs> this is her studio. <laughs> this is it. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you for coming by.